But to answer your question in advance, really a lot of information gathering and understanding what the objectives of the client wants. That's why I really suggest to, um, to everybody watching is to find somebody that can be that trusted advisor who's going to act in that fiduciary capacity, who's going to make suggestions that are to benefit you. Not, not them. And that's why we don't have any commission or we don't have any securities licenses and things like that. It is truly objective advice that we, that we give to our clients. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of Business Ninjas. I'm here with Yanni Gordon from JMG Financial Group. Hey, Yanni, how you doing? Hey, Andy, good. How are you doing today? Doing great. Great to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Well, tell me a little bit about what you do at JMG and, and uh, how you work with your clients. Sure. Well, JMG Financial Group was founded in 1984. And I would say we we're early on pioneers of the RIA industry, which is fee-only uh, comprehensive financial planning. We were founded by accountants uh, back in 1984. And uh, that's why we continue to do tax returns. So we uh, do full service uh, wealth management uh, services for the higher net worth individuals. Uh, that's comprehensive planning. So that covers income tax planning and income tax preparation, uh, investment planning and management, uh, estate planning, cash flow, retirement planning, all aspects of comprehensive financial planning. We don't sell any product, so that's why we can be very objective in the advice that we provide to our clients. And I, um, I've i been at the firm, I just celebrated my 36th uh, work anniversary, so I joined the firm in 1986. How exciting. That's amazing. And you're the, the chief operating officer and chief marketing officer at the company. Right? I am. I am. But I did not start in that role. So I it did take, I have evolved and I've had many careers at the firm. Very fortunate to have that. I love it. That's such a great success story. Work your way up. Tell me a little bit about that. Where did you start in the company? Well, I mean, when I started, I was a very naive college graduate. And um, at that time, really, there was no fee only. There was no concept of fee only planning. Really, um, back then in the 80s, uh, financial advisors were really um, more of insurance sales. And uh, actually, that's kind of how I got started. Um, I, I kind of got sucked into an insurance sales position, which I was really not aware of until they told me, sat me down and said, let's get you licensed. And now let's make a list of friends and family and, and sell whole life and uh, universal life policies. Uh, I was 20 years old at the time. Uh, and so I realized after about a month that was not for me. So just fortunate to run into somebody who gave me a chance and an opportunity to learn. At the time, I think I was employee number 13. And now we are uh, growing rapidly. We've grown organically over time. We have 94 employees now. And I have personally had the privilege to hire close to 80% of our existing employees over my career. So exciting. I love the story. This is just like classic success story. So, so tell me a little bit about how you work with your clients. You, you, who, first of all, who are your clients? Who's the profile of, uh, of the people that you work with? So we have, um, I would say our specialty niche market are the corporate C-suite executives of publicly traded companies. They have a lot of uh, complex tax issues, maybe multi-state tax issues. They might sit on a number of boards or may have moved a number of times. Um, they also have complexities in their estate plan. And so we, we advise them on their planning. We kind of become their CFO of their family and kind of uh, go through that planning process. For us, it's really about establishing a relationship with our clients. Personally, I have known my clients for as long as I've been at the firm. And so when I started at an entry level position, I was entering all the information, I was preparing the meeting materials, I was supporting a financial advisor. So I got to see those clients prepare for retirement. And then as I progressed in my career, I am a CFP. And so as I progressed, I became their advisor during their retirement. 
And now um, there are, you know, they're in their 80s and actually some of them are in their 90s uh, towards the end of their life. And so now I, I'm actually working with their families on their uh, estate plan. And it is actually very sad for me when they do pass away because it's such a personal relationship. A lot of them know my family. They know my kids. They've seen my kids grow up over this time. And so now uh, when they do pass away, it's extremely sad for me personally uh, because of that relationship I've developed over time. But, you know, I look at that career and what a privilege really to be with a client for every stage of their financial life and to be there and to see the uh, impact that I have had on the advice given to them during their lifetime and just dealing with their families. I mean, there's nothing more rewarding when their adult children say to me, you know, what would my mom or dad have done without you? So that is, is the rewarding part of my career. And that's how we deal with our clients. And, and really over time, it's that relationship building. So even in times of market volatility and, you know, crises that happen, uh, we're usually one of the first phone calls they make. And what should I do? I've, in my career, my uh, clients have called, what type of, uh, should I buy or lease my car? What type of mortgage? What state should I retire to? I'm mad at my kids, so I want to redo my trust, you know, all those things. And, and so that's really how we work with our clients. Again, it's really more relationship driven. It's it's part therapist and also part uh, financial advisor. Too. It is definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> That's wonderful. And and how you get so close to their families, I, I I love that idea. Tell me a little bit about when you start working with somebody. What's what's the entry point, and how do you roadmap it for them? Uh, so that let's say that I am interested in becoming a prospective customer. What would, what would the plan be? How do I get started? How do you help me kind of think about? all these different financial aspects of my life? Well, the thing is, is that as time goes on for individuals and they, you know, develop, you know, they start a career and they start building, uh, maybe starting a family and start building some wealth, they have to recognize, everybody recognizes, and we're all living it, where we are in our own financial life. And, you know, there's the accumulation phase and then ultimately going to that uh, dispersion phase phase where you need the money and you want to where you stop working. So you've, you know, built up that. So it's all part of that planning. Mm -hmm. um, individuals come to us when they may have uh, done their own investments. And so now it's getting to uh, a time where they don't have time and they need some professional guidance and also tax planning. The one thing I remind people is that there is a difference between a financial advisor and your accountant. Your accountant and there's nothing you know accountants we need accountants and and so but here is the difference um if you have yelled at your accountant because you were surprised by your balance due on your tax return you should go apologize to them because it's not their fault you you go to your accountant after the year is done you get all your tax documents together in, in january february and give it to your accountant and they put it into your tax return and so they you know push the button they say this is how much you owe, or this is your refund. Okay. They, the year is over. They, they have not had an opportunity to do planning with you. What we do with our clients is we are planning throughout the year with them. And, and so, and that's why the, the tax planning is so central core to the planning that we do, because even it, how the investments tie into that you know, any rebalance of a portfolio, you should understand what the tax implications are going to be before you do a rebalance. Not when you go, an investment advisor might say, well, we're going to rebalance your portfolio. Here's what we did now. Go to your accountant and let them know what we what we did. And then your can't, accountant can't do anything about it either because you've already done it. So I think an advisor and the way we work with our client is going through that planning process. And so a lot of the upfront onboarding is, information gathering, understanding how assets are titled, because that's very important, is understanding how your estate would be handled if something were to happen to you or your partner. And then understanding financial goals and objectives, because everybody is different. Every client has a different situation. They all have different family situations and they all have different goals and objectives. 
And so I think that's important is to understand what those goals and objectives are. And then you get into the numbers and say, okay, well, let's look at, you know, just typical things that common sense, uh, how much are you making? How much do you spend? What are your goals? How much are you saving? All those things. And then things happen in life. You might get married. You might have a child. You know, all these things that that you're planning for. So um, that's where that planning comes into play. It's never ending, even even after death, because after death, then there is the estate, the administration, making sure, you know, assets transfer accordingly, things like that. So it's an ongoing process. But to answer your question in the beginning, it's really a lot of information gathering and understanding what the objectives of the client wants. That's why I really suggest to um, to everybody watching is to find somebody that can be that trusted advisor who's going to act in that fiduciary capacity, who's going to make suggestions that are to benefit you, not not them. And that's why we don't have any commission or we don't have any securities licenses and things like that. It is truly objective advice that we that we give to our clients. That makes a lot of sense. And so from a tactical perspective, there's got to be a lot of documentation that goes back and forth and places where you have to store all these documents so that it's in an orderly place, especially when you're doing estate planning and through, you know, uh, uh, the unfortunate uh, situation when somebody does pass away, having access to all this documentation is, is important. Do you, do you use Dropbox or like what are some tools that you use? Do you use do your financial planning in Excel or do you have a platform that you use that outputs these numbers to say, here are the inputs and it outputs it? Tell me a little bit about that as you're doing your planning with your clients. So over you know the past three and a half decades that I've been in this business, the, the industry has evolved over time. So there are so many more resources now available to financial advisors. And, and so we, uh, earlier on, uh, one of my partners and my mentors uh, had the vision of our technology. So we actually created our own CRM system. Uh, and, and so that's proprietary to us. And from that, we've been able to uh, write other applications to work with our CRM. But in addition, we can also write interfaces that speak to products off the shelf that that we uh, work with. So as far as uh, some of the tools to, and I'm not promoting or anything like sure, that. Yeah, I'm just anything. curious because I've done some estate planning myself and I, I'm always fascinated by uh, how people do it to make it an efficient process. Yeah, so for, for documents, we use ShareFile. Mm -hmm. For you know the confidentiality and security purposes. Mm -hmm. I mean, cybersecurity is something that we're it's very top of mind uh, yeah. at our firm, as it should be with all other firms. And I'm pretty much in in all industries with technology. It's it's important. Um, we have some proprietary planning things that that we use. We use uh, BNA um, for tax projection purposes. Uh, CCH Access is uh, tax preparation software mm -hmm. that we use. Uh, we also have a institutional relationship with Charles Schwab. And so Schwab um, handles the custody of assets for our clients. And, and so that's why we're, we're um, you know, uh, an objective party with that. It's a working relationship with them. Schwab is one of the largest custodians out there in our industry. Uh, and and so um, they have a service team. They have, you know, I don't know if people know this, but they have a retail business and an institutional business. So the RIA business, which is a registered investment advisory business, has grown tremendously over the past 30 years um, into what it is today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a platform. And uh, I love that you've developed your CRM to be interoperable with all these different other platforms. That makes it really efficient for the, the client. I can see. Yeah, that. definitely. I'm going to age myself. But you know, I remember when I started in this business, you know, we had to call to, to find out what the markets were doing. And, and, you know, it'd be delayed. And there was no internet and um, no way to get that information right away. And, um, you know, having to write notes on papers and pads. Things like that. So. <laughs> it's nice when it updates automatically. When you have it does. It does. In. <laughs> yeah, it, it does totally. Um, so and so here we today. My goodness, there's so many 
resources and fintech companies and you know so many competing products out there uh, that it's really challenging to find the right one. And I can imagine on, on the customer side, it's also very challenging because you kind of don't know, you don't know what you don't know. You know you need to get a plan together. You know you don't want to pay more tax than you need to ever. So how do you how do you sort that out? So when 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 clients come to you and you start working with them, um, is the very first process, a, it sounds like a discovery process that needs to happen where you learn about what agreements you have in place, what your income is, what your tax situation is, look at past tax reports, all of that to level set. Is that is that fair to say? Yes, absolutely. It's a lot of uh, discovery, as you should say, and that's looking at tax returns, it's looking at pay stubs, it's reviewing all brokerage statements just to see, to have everything um, you know, together and we summarize all of that. Yeah. For, for a client. So it, it's a tool that we use. Um, it's their net worth. And so we kind of go through that process and, and we can take a lot from their tax returns. Um, mm -hmm. And so get kind of going back to the tax planning part of it for our clients, we never want April 15th to be a surprise. It's, right. Everybody should know what their tax situation is um, on April 15th. It's just a matter of compliance and getting the returns filed. We actually are getting into our busy season at the end of the year where we, we're doing a lot of the year-end tax planning. And, and so that's the advantage and the value that we bring to the client relationship. The other thing with investments, you know, while everybody I'm sure knows the term asset allocation, but really it's asset location. It, are your assets located in the right places to be most tax efficient? Right, yeah, and that I can understand end of year can be even a scramble to uh, you know, meet deadlines before December 31st expires. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. Well, tell me a little bit. I'm going to switch gears a little bit and, and we'll put on your, your CMO hat, your chief marketing officer hat. Tell me a little bit about how the company has grown and how you view growth within the company. So really, our, our company has grown, as I mentioned before, organically. Uh, mm -hmm. It's by client referrals. Uh, we're in a space where a lot of corporate executives um, engage us to do their planning for them. They retire and then we get the next uh, successor, uh, you know, at the company. Um, that's how we've grown over time, also based on referrals. Uh, mm -hmm. We have quite a few business owners as well um, who have situations where they need to have a lot of planning uh, because maybe they sell a business or they have a number of businesses uh, and, you know, want to make sure they have everything in place as far as comprehensive planning goes. So I think that's really how we've done. We really have not, um, you know, we're not out there doing a lot of commercials or ads or anything like that. It's it's really uh, based on referrals. And that's why our clients, it's really about the long-term relationship. And so that's why we have such high client retention and mm -hmm. high employee retention as well. Um, a number of my partners now, I, you know, hired them out of college 20 years ago and and now i've seen them uh grow up to and get married and have kids and now become my partners just like my mentors uh literally saw me grow up uh, get married have kids and and they are now retired clients of our firm and uh and i became their partner so it, it's really a special cycle i i'd say very cool the the, the term slow and steady wins the race kind of comes to mind here because you're not opening it up to everybody to just grow as fast as you can. It's a measured kind of growth through referrals and relationships and really harnessing those relationships. Mm -hmm. And I think the internal growth, I mean, I really credit my mentors and predecessors in terms of their planning years ago that they put in place um, for our succession plan and just how we've grown. I mean, we're in our third generation of leadership at the firm fifth generation of ownership at the firm. So we're, we're living our succession plan now. And I think that's something that we're really proud of, especially in our space where there's a lot of uh, M&A activity happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I guess my last question here is, if you were to project out a year from now, what would you like to be celebrating? Either oh, professionally wow. or personally? 
Well, let's hope that the markets kind of can get, <laughs> get over this rough spot. We get inflation under control and things like that uh, coming together more as a as a country. Uh, things uh, would be great to celebrate. Yes. Uh, for for me and for our firm, I think it's just continued growth. Uh, and, and actually, it's a controlled growth and make sure that we maintain this culture that we've built over time. Uh, we invest a lot in our people. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's another reason we have such high retention. We spend a lot of time on personal and professional development and understanding that not everybody's wired the same way. And, and also providing options. Uh, we're not the best fit for every client. We're not the best fit for any potential employee either. So I think it's important to to make sure that we we never lose sight of what our objectives are, keeping our core values. And that's why we've continued to grow. And I expect to continue to grow in that way. Wonderful. Well, Yanni, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Andy. It was a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me on. My pleasure. Yanni Gordon from JMG Financial Group. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody.